All right, our next lightning round speaker is Victor Chavez. Um, he is going to actually talk about a lab that has had a long history in Cypher education. This was originally a Jupyter Notebook lab, and it has been converted to a Sci API lab, um, looking at basis sets and how that affects calculation accuracy. So Victor, please take it away. All right, thank you so much, Ashley, for inviting me to talk here. Uh, okay, I hope I do not go into any problem. Uh, I hope you're seeing my browser screen. Okay, um, so as Ashley mentioned, um, this is uh, not necessarily a new lab. Uh, this is something that people who know about the educational resources that uh, Cypor has done in the past uh, will recognize. Uh, this is the lab that was created uh, to be done with WebMO that introduces all of the, you know, theoretical parts of what, uh, you know, basis set is in chemistry. And I know that many of us who are here really know much about this, so I won't, you know, go into much detail of, you know, all of the things that are done in here. But of course, I feel like everyone can remember the first time that we're introduced into basis set and how, you know, you have this zoo of many acronyms that don't make any sense with pluses and with my, uh, asterisks. So um, this lab was designed uh, to make this, you know, first approach a little bit easier. And so, you know, we start just making a simple calculation using S3O3OG. And, you know, we look at the energy and we look at the number of basis functions and then, you know, we introduce the basis functions. And of course, we look into how, you know, you know, uh, atomic systems like to behave as later type orbitals. Uh, but simply because of this little theorem that states that the product of two Gaussians is also a Gaussian, you know, uh, in order to, you know, uh, use uh, in order or because of our computational uh, deficiencies, it's easier for us to calculate Gaussians. So, of course, we use the sum of Gaussians in the hopes that they will mimic Slater-type orbitals. Uh, and for this part of the lab, this is uh, the user is not meant to do anything. They just run this lab and they just like look at this plot. Uh, but I find it very interesting to be using um, extremely ri visually rich uh, tools like the Jupyter Notebooks because, you know, all of these images are actually getting produced in the Jupyter Notebook. So, you know, you usually talk about how you add diffuse functions and how they, how those depend on the value that you put into the exponent. And this is something that the students can actually do in the Jupyter uh, Notebook. So, you know, you get exposure to this and then you see how, you know, you approximate the function that you want with the Gaussians. And, you know, we get introduced this classic plot that Professor Petowski, you know, will make this look very lame because it's not like a proper widget. Uh, but here, you know, this is a classic plot that we always get. And then, okay, now that you have been introduced to basis set and that you, you know, made your STO3G calculation, how can I improve on the energy? Um, so here I start talking about more polarization functions and diffuse functions and what do they mean and how they affect the calculation. And then this is where the student actually starts uh, developing the lab. And here there's just a, a little bit of Python that they really need to know. Here just you're just iterating over a list uh, of basis sets and then you're looking at how, you know, that energy uh, is converging. Uh, of course, we know that, you know, for... Um, every method, not necessarily, you will uh, achieve a better energy just by, you know, increasing the basis set, but this is just like a very easy, like, initial lab for a student to make. And then you go into, you know, uh, just by looking at a basis set, how can I tell that, you know, it has diffuse functions and um, polarized functions. And then in the end, now that you have already all of this knowledge, it's okay, we're going to work with this and we're going to start making calculations. So, you know, we go through, you know, how much correlation energy you can get from different uh, methods and then you compare them. And then in the end, you look at a very simple example using DFD and how you calculate the electron affinity of boron. Um, so then again, this is like an extremely simple, easy lab 
uh, that students can uh, go through very quickly. Uh, but I feel like one of the main advantages that all of these Jupyter notebooks have is that, you know, we have, I've been showing you like the uh, instructor version, which has all of the answers. So you could go through this in class with your, if you're with your students, if you believe they don't have the ability to go through it. And, you know, if the barrier, if this barrier is even too large, you can just go and launch the WebML version. So I feel like you can see here the range of options that all of the resources that's tied for education has for, you know, whatever is more convenient for you and your students. Um, so that's pretty much uh, the lab.